Hello, my name is Dmitry, I'm from Srokal, and uh, in this video we will be talking about image segmentation. First of all, let's find out what image segmentation is. There are various ways to define it, but we will go with uh, this one. Image seg segmentation divides images into regions, so each pixel is mapped uh, into one of them. Sounds easy, right? Well, not that easy, if you think about that a bit more. Let's have a look at uh, some outdoor pictures. There are skies, mountains, trees, cars, homes, and the road. There are a lot of objects here. Which one of these two segmentations will be more appropriate? What do you think? In the left or in the right? Well, the answer is it completely depends on the task you are trying to solve. There are three types of uh, image segmentation. Semantic, instance, and panoptic. Semantic segmentation works with class labels for each pixel, so our example will look like uh, shown in the first image. Each car will be labeled the same, so different cars will be merged in one car region. And there comes instant segmentation. In this case, we will label each object of interest independently, so different cars will be labeled as different objects. Usually, in this case, uh, we label only the interesting objects themselves, but not the working region. So it corresponds to what you see in the right picture. And uh, panoptic segmentation works on both these issues. Each pixel has, in this case, two labels. Label of the region and label of the object uh, definitive instance. Okay, now then, when we finally have finished uh, with the general problem a statement itself, we can move to the metrics that we will use. For image segmentation, there are several metrics uh, that we are usually using. Let's have a look. First of all, pixel accuracy is pretty obvious. We just calculate the percentage of correctly selected pixels, and uh, this might have a negative effect in the case where high-class imbalance is seen. For example, for an image where we have one class is 95% of the image and the other is only 5%, we will get 95% of the accuracy for the first class by just selecting the whole image. In order to overcome this, uh, we can use similar trick as in normal classification task that many of you are familiar with, the F1 metric, or in this case uh, it is called DICE metric. It is calculated as doubled intersection divided by the complete sum of intersected regions. As you can imagine, for regions of the same size, it will be the same as pixel accuracy. The more strict one is Jacquard distance or, or intersection over, over union, IUU. Well, the name says it's all. As you can see, it is a really hard one. It will give only 66.7% with 80 pixel accuracy in the first case and just 50% with 75% pixel accuracy in the second case. For this reason, it might be sometimes hard to use in the model's training, a small model. Quality increases will not provide big enough metric growth. But if we are talking about 3D images, then things change quite a bit. Often in this case we use 3D house door di distance, which in some sense also captures the shape of intersected regions. Look at this formula on the slide. In order to understand it better, let's have a look at the example. Each sum runs uh, through all voxels of uh, the two intersecting regions. Voxels that are intersecting directly have the distance zero, so don't add any penalty to the result. The further sum voxel from one region, from the closest voxel of the intersecting region, the more penalty will be added to the resulting sum from this voxel. Now that we have talked about metrics, let's move on to the segmentation algorithms themselves. We will talk about four types of uh, segmentation techniques. Threshold segmentation, regional growth segmentation, clustering segmentation, and neural networks-based segmentation. The three first ones are classical, and they take root in the pre-neural network computer vision era. Also, it might not sound as that inspiring for you. These techniques are still up to date, they require much less resources, 
than modern neural networks based and to work pretty well in various applications. And we will start with threshold segmentation. These types of algorithms are the most classical ones. Usually all of them work on top of this approach. Image is taken in grayscale and some uh, threshold is selected. All pixels that have values greater than the threshold are set to 1, others are set to 0. After that, some additional noise clearing and other heuristics can be applied. The procedure gives us a binary map that shows where two different classes are located and obviously works when they are somewhat easily separated. For example, they can be applied on conveyor systems where detailed contours can be detached. They are quite contrast to the background. Region growth segmentation algorithms are searching for the similar adjacent pixels and group them into a class. In order to work, you need to define the seed pixels that will be used later on for the growth. Usually they work iteratively. After some pixels are added to the class, we initialize them as new seed pixels and uh, continue the process further and further. The initial seed pixels selection, both with threshold selection itself, might be quite tricky. But with property union, we can focus uh, the algorithm directly on the image properties that we want to extract. Moreover, in comparison uh, with the previous one, this approach is suitable for multiple labels. Unfortunately, this method works well only with images that have quite clear edges, but still have many applications due to high effectiveness. The last but not least classical approach that we will take today is uh, clustering segmentation. As you can get from the name of this approach, it uses clustering algorithms as a core. Let me give a short overview of the procedure. First, you need to form an array of pixels uh, that are used in, in your image. Each individual pixel will be an object that is usually categorized with three features. The colored channels. After that, you can run any clustering algorithm of your choice. Three-dimensional objects. Get clusters, the centroids, and relabel each object with the label of corresponding centroid. After that, you can reconstruct the original image with new pixel colors. Look at this image of k-means clustering segmentation from OpenCV. Works pretty well, right? Actually, though it's quite simple, there are many different applications where clustering segmentation works pretty effectively. There are many neural networks based on approaches out there, but the most iconic one of them, of course, is UNet. We will not get deep on details how it works, but let's take some notes from it. As you can see from the original image, the network itself is U-shaped and the left part of it encoder, while the right part is called decoder. If you look on the left part, it works just as usual, a convolutional neural network. If your task is classification, you, you will just add some dense layers after the encoder and it will work just fine. While the encoder part is constructed with 3x3 three three convolutions and 2x2 uh, two two max pool. The decoder part is basically upscaling the image from the decoding stage. This architecture is quite efficient when you try not to have too much data labeled as it initially was developed in 2015 for the medical image segmentation. Well, for most tutorials it will end at this point, but we will go deeper. If you have missed it for some reason, in 2021 the Transformers Tempeed has started around the world. Everyone was adapting and uh, Transformers in many different benchmarks beating all the other models. And the simulation task is not an exclusion. Many modern algorithms based on SWIN architecture, which is based on VIT architecture. A SWIN in this case stands for shifted windows and VIT for vision transformers. Another example is DEED, which stands for Data Efficient Image Transformer. And actually many more of them. In this moment, this video is recorded. We are right in the middle of uh, research on the transformers for each image segmentation. So it's hard to predict which models will be used the most. The only thing you should remember is that all these transformer-based models require a lot of data and the training power to work. So be careful if you decide to use them. In this video, we talked about a lot of different stuff related to image segmentation. Although hopefully we have some 
general understanding of the problem and some related algorithms, there is a lot more for you to find out. If you find uh, this video useful and interesting, please give it a like and press subscribe button. There are a lot of machine learning content to come. See you next time.